Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to set up my month of February in my bullet journal. This time I'm trying a lot of different things and I'm very excited to share the theme I did with you. I think you will love it, so sit back, grab a cup of tea and let's start planning. So February is a month where a lot of bullet journalists do light pink themes or themes related to love and hearts and Valentine's Day and I have been doing pink themes for February since forever so I decided to break the cycle a little bit and do a deep vibrant red theme for this month. My biggest inspiration for this theme was this page I saw by Haley's.Bujo on Instagram because I wanted the main color of the theme to be red and to have some scrapbooking vibes to it, so I thought that doing a vintage scrapbooking old love letters inspired theme would be perfect for this month. And since I don't use red a lot, I actually didn't use red for any theme in 2020. So I decided to do a theme where I would challenge myself and use the color red as the accent color. I paired the red with brown because brown goes well with everything and I also don't have a lot of red stationery so I thought that the brown would help a lot in this theme. So for the cover page I used two shades of red to create an ombre effect for the title. I normally don't do this but every now and then I like to add a fun effect on my title. And the notebook that I'm using is the one from Scribbles App Matters. So the pages are pretty thick and there was no bleed through or ghosting on the other side. And I decided to use book pages and paper scraps for the scrapbooking element of the theme. I actually don't have any red washi tapes, or at least not enough for a whole theme, so I decided to think outside the box and use some red origami paper and use it as washi tape or just paper scraps. You don't need to have that specific item to create a theme, and my original idea was to use the red paper as washi tape strips, but I actually liked the paper effect of it, so I just ripped it off instead of cutting it with scissors. Another thing that you can do is purchase digital washi tapes on Etsy and print the washi tapes at home. That crossed my mind, but because I had the red paper, I ended up not doing it. Next to my cover page, I'm doing a mood board, which is also something that I never did in my bullet journal. I've seen Natalie from Blossom Bujo doing this thing on her bullet journal every month, where she just prints a bunch of pictures and she kind of does a mood board, and she also has that on her Patreon, that I decided to try it out just because I wanted a quote page, but I wanted to be able to play around with the papers and the stickers. I printed some pictures from Pinterest when I was brainstorming my theme for February and I just did whatever I wanted with them in the moment with the stickers to make a big mood board. Some of the stickers that I'm using in this theme were gifted from my pen pals, so I can't really say where they got them from and it was also thanks to them that I started using those white circle stickers that you see me using in this theme. This was just really fun and creative to do, so I just felt really good setting up this page and I will do a mood board in every single theme in the future probably. Next up I have a productivity and mood tracker. I rarely do trackers that are graphs, but I wanted to have a tracker for my productivity and mood, so I just decided to do a graph since it's the easier layout to do, and also to take the advantage of the fact that February is a month with even days. I did 14 days in each graph and I will just track if my productivity and moods were excellent, okay or not so great and I will use two different shades of red to distinguish the different things that I'm tracking. 
Another thing that I have been doing lately is keeping the tracking simple and then if I want to elaborate more about why my mood was low or I didn't do something that day, I will journal about it. Journaling is something that I started doing more often this year and it has been great to just put my feelings into my journal. So now I normally just track the things in my bullet journal normally and then I have a separate journal where I journal about my day or what I did or what I didn't do or how I felt. By the way, all the materials that I'm using for this theme are in the description box. I always link everything in the description box for all of my videos and I normally have their coupon code so you can save some money on some of the shops that I shop from. Some of the things I got from the dollar store so I can't really link them, but most of them I got online. But regardless of that, everything is always listed in the description. And a huge shout out to Gallon and Leather for sending me a brand new pair of scissors. I was ashamed of the scissors that I was using because they were all crusty and had glue everywhere. So it was really nice to have a new pair of scissors to use on these types of scrap projects. Next I have my expense tracker. You know this page already because I do it every single month. I just write here my expenses for the month and then at the end I do a review of them so I can see how much money I spent and earned and where my money is going. I find it really really helpful to have a physical expense tracker just because I always feel a bit guilty when I spend money on things so it's nice to see how much money I'm spending but also how much money I made throughout the month so I don't feel so guilty. I highly recommend this page if you're trying to save money or if you just started a job or something. It's so important to keep track of your money. I highly recommend this page if you don't have it in your bullet journal. For the scrapbooking portion, I actually bought paper cake plates, I think that's how you call it, from the dollar store just to have that white paper with little holes that I see everyone using on their pen pals. I finally found something pretty similar to the ones I see online. The only thing is that this one is a lot bigger because it's for a cake. So the curve of the paper is wider, but that doesn't bother me a lot, so I am really happy to have found this. Also, highly recommend searching on the dollar store for different scrap things to use in your buju and pen pals. I have been doing that for the past month before the lockdown here in Portugal, and I have been finding a lot of stuff that I never thought to purchase for my pen pals, but that are amazing, so I highly recommend that as well. My next page is a dedicated page for my habits. Last month I divided my habits between normal daily habits and health related ones and it worked really well for me so this time I'm doing that again. On the left page I have my daily habits such as taking my vitamins, my water intake if I studied that day, if I used my stand-up desk and if I didn't drink coffee. And then on the right, I have my workout health related habits like stretching, meditating, working out and just taking a walk. Also, below the health related habits, I did a notes section so I can write down any notes related to my habits or how I felt after a workout or why did I miss a workout. Pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to just have that space here so I can kinda like comment on the habits that I did, if that makes sense. And again, if I want to elaborate more, I will write it down on my journal. For this page, I don't know why I didn't use my calendar stamps, but I was really happy about the number of days that February has that I forgot to use them and I just wrote them all by hand. The book pages idea is something that I see a lot on pen pal letters, so I just ripped them off of a book that I will not read again to use on my spreads and pen pals. 
I also used some grid paper and this one is from Muji, some circle stickers and washi tapes from the washi tape shop, and some sticky notes and other stickers that I had that would match the theme. The stamps that I'm using are from Paper House. I never use them, but I added them last minute because they looked cute. The last spread is the weekly spread. Mostly inspired by Haley's page that I showed earlier, I was never the type of person to do a messy layout and I'm still not because I had to measure everything before going with the markers. And for a layout like this, I just divide the page into thirds horizontally and in half vertically. So I have six spaces on each page, two at the top and three vertically on each page. And then I just choose which ones are for my days of the week and the ones that are for any decorations. You can do a bunch of different things with this layout, so it's always fun to do it when I'm trying to be creative and to challenge my creativity. I left a lot of white space on the pages because I simply don't like when my pages are too crowded with lines and illustrations and also because I wanted to have the focus on the illustrations themselves and not on the other aspects of the page, if that makes sense. I ended up adding some vertical dividers at the bottom so it would look a bit better and I also added the days of the week with the notebook therapy alphabet stamps. They were too cute for this theme but I really like to have them on the spread. So those were all the pages I did for February. My cat really wanted to participate in the flip through so I hope you don't mind. I had a lot of fun making this theme. I never did anything like this before or used these many items in my journal, so it was definitely great to try something different. If you watched until this point, leave a push pin emoji in the comments down below and I'll see you in my real-time setup answering your questions next week. Bye guys!